In this video we're going to take a look at how we can make uh, binary adders that are fast and um, allow us to compute the sum of an n-bit quantity, or of two n-bit quantities, at a much faster time than we could do with a ripple carry adder. Here's the block diagram of an n-bit ripple carry adder. And we go from uh, right to left as we do the addition. So here is the least significant bit. And over here is the most significant bit. And we have n stages in here. So we can label those 0, 1, etc. up to n minus 1. And we have the carry input to each of those uh, full adders here and the carry output. So we have C0 going into the first block, C1 coming out of the first block here, then C1 being the input to the next block, C2 coming out of this block, and the last block has input C sub n minus 1 and output C sub n. And what basically determines <coughs> the speed at which we can do addition is how long it takes from the right side to the left side in the worst case in order to actually compute the sum s sub n minus 1 and the carry output c sub n. So roughly we can see that uh, this delay is going to be proportional to the number of stages that we have. So we have a delay which is approximately n times stage delay. The computations that each stage is performing is the sum computation, which is the XOR of XI, YI, and CI. So the XOR of the two inputs, of the two numbers that we want to add together, plus whatever carry input there is. And then the carry out is computed as the majority function of um, XI, YI, and CI. And uh, this is the Boolean expression for that. So, as we already mentioned, the speed of this n-bit ripple adder is determined by the propagation of the carry through all the adder stages. And from C0, the input up to Cn at the output, we do have at least two n-gate delays looking at uh, how the carry for the next uh, stage is being computed. Uh, this could be implemented as an as a two level and or circuit and that gives us the two and the two n gate delays the key to speeding up the performance of an n bit adder then is to evaluate for each stage as quickly as possible whether the carry in from the previous stage will have a value of 0 or 1 So now we will take a closer look at this uh, function here that computes the carry for the next stage, the carry out of uh, stage i and the input of stage i plus 1. So we can break up this um, uh, majority function here into an xi yi portion and into an xi plus yi uh, um, ended with ci portion. And we can define two quantities. Uh, the generate quantity, which is this one here, and the propagate quantity, which is this one here. We call this the generate um, function because if xi and yi are both 1, then the current stage, the i stage, is generating. So i's stage generates a carry. And so then uh, we, we know for sure that there will be a carry out from this stage. Uh, there could be also a carry in, but that's not going to affect uh, whether we have the carry out or not, uh, if this one already generates a carry. And then if not both x and y are 1, if only one of those is 1, then the carry that comes at the input will propagate to the output. So this is the propagate function. 
And so now we can compute the carry the, uh, at the output, the carry out. The carry out here as being the OR combination of the generate function and the propagate function. So this is uh, the expression that we are going to take a look at now and which we will use in order to speed up uh, this uh, generation of the carry over several stages. To do this we use that um, formula here that we just derived recursively. So we compute um, c sub i plus 1 as being g i plus p i times c i, but for c i we are actually substituting the actual value that we get for this using the formula for uh, the next carry. So this is c i now expanded, so c i depends on um, whether x i and y i are both 1, so that would produce a 1 for the generate function of the i's, uh, i minus first stage. And the p i minus 1, that would be 1 if either x i minus 1 or y i minus 1 is 1. And then the carry from the previous stage, uh, the input carry, will propagate to the output of that um, i minus 1 stage. Okay, and so if we work this out, that's what it's going to look like. g i plus p i times g i minus 1 plus p i times p i minus 1 times c i minus 1. And then we can take this one step further. We can now express c i minus 1 in terms of the uh, uh, formula that we have for going from a carry in to a carry out. So this is substituted here. So this is c i minus 1. So that is what is produced in the i minus second stage of the computation. And again, we have the generate function here of the i minus second stage, and we have the propagate of the i minus second stage. So this is i minus two stage. And the one up here was um, i minus one stage that we have inside here and inside here. And so we get, um, if we continue this, we get longer and longer expressions. And uh, we can see that for the i stage, the output of the carry, which is ci plus 1, depends on whether the i stage is producing a carry, that's the gi, pl plus or or. Um, the propagate of the I stage, whether the I stage is propagating a, a carry from the previous stage, and the previous stage could either generate the carry with the GI minus 1, or it could propagate a carry with the PI minus 1. So here's the PI minus 1, here's the GI minus 1 of the previous stage, and then uh, we go back uh, yet another stage. So if the I stage propagates the carry and the I minus first stage propagates the carry and the I minus second stage propagates the carry then so this should actually be purple now to keep the coloring scheme so if all of those previous stages are propagating a carry then the carry at the input of the I minus second stage is actually going to go through and possibly influence this, um, or, or actually for sure influence this ci plus 1 if ci minus 2 is equal to 1. Okay, so the final expression looks like this ci plus 1 is equal to gi, so that's the generate from the I stage, then the generate from the I minus first stage, I minus second stage, and then all the way down to the zeros stage, the first stage, or the LSB, and then uh, the carry C sub zero. Actually, let's do this um, in red. And then uh, the other thing that can uh, influence the carry output of the I 
of the i stage is going to be if the i minus first stage is um, uh, if the i stage is propagating from the i minus first stage if the i stage and the i minus first stage are propagating etc until we have this whole long string here of all stages propagating down to stage one times the carry that would be generated in uh, in stage zero and then uh, the last one here is to propagate through all the stages down through, through stage zero and then that would propagate a carry input that comes at the input of stage zero. So this expression does get complicated as um, i increases or as in general as we make an n bit adder with n large but the point of showing it here is that it can be implemented just using an and or circuit, the two level and or circuit and so that means c sub i plus one can be evaluated uh, very quickly namely within um, a delay of within two gate delays two gate delays because we have to go through the end gates here and then we have to collect all the outputs of the end gates in an OR gate and that will produce the output c sub i plus one so an adder that is based on this expression is called a carry look ahead adder So now let's take uh, a look at a comparison of an adder which has just two stages. One, a ripple carry. So the one here that is shown here is a ripple carry adder. And then another one with the carry look ahead. So the, in the ripple carry adder, we produce the carry in, the st in stage zero uh, internally and then uh, feed the output as the input the carry input into the next stage and so forth so we have it formulated here in terms of those generate and propagate functions so the propagate function is xi ord with yi so that's uh, this one here and then the generate uh, so this is the one here and then the generate one is the one where we end together xi and yi. And in the case of propagate, we propagate the carry that comes in. So we have another end gate here between the incoming carry and that propagate. In terms of the generate, we go directly to the next stage and we or those two together. And then there is, of course, also the computation of the sum. So here is the x or of um, C0, uh, X0, and Y0. That produces the sum bit 0 and uh, similarly over here for the sum bit 1. So if we take a look now at the critical pass uh, through that adder, the pass that will take the longest delay, then if we go from one of those inputs in stage 0, X0 or Y0, uh, the one that's highlighted here is the one from y0. We first go through the propagate stage and then we uh, combine this together with the carry input. That output gets ORed together with the generate um, function and uh, that output finally goes out uh, as um, the carry out from stage 0 and becomes the carry in for stage 1. And in stage one, it goes through that uh, AND gate, which is for the for ending together with the propagate function. It goes to the OR gate, which is for ORing it together with the generate function. And then it goes to the output. So as we can see, it will take one, two, three gate delays in that first stage, where we have to look at um, the actual input Y0. And, and x0 whether uh, one of those is one and then it proceeds through all the next stages going through two gate delays uh, the stage two would also have two gate delays and so forth and so all together we get the delay of two times n plus one uh, for that critical pass 
Okay, so that is um, written out here. The critical carry propagation passes from either x0 or y0 uh, to the output t c2 in this um, limited uh, case here where we just have two stages. And that gave, gave us a 5 gate delay. And in general, we will have a 2n plus 1 gate delay. So if we make a 32-bit adder, for example, we will have a 65 gate delay. A 32-bit adder has 65 gate delays. Okay, so that can add up uh, to quite a bit. A gate delay might be on the order of, say, 10 nanoseconds. By the time you have 65 of them, then you are already fairly close to one microsecond, and that's going to limit the performance of such a ripple carry adder. So now we're going to take a look at the two-stage carry look-ahead adder, where we are going to use uh, C1 equal to the generate zero plus um, propagate zero times C zero. So that's the, the same expression as we had for the ripple carry adder. But then C2 is now computed using that recursive computation that we did before, that, that gives us the carry look ahead. So we have here the generate um, G1 and G0. And there is actually an error here. This G0 here should be a C0. Okay, so we compute um, the C2 uh, from those two generate functions and the propagate function. Okay, so that is the propagate function from uh, the first stage or stage one and then the propagate function from stage 0 and stage 1 and the carry um, 0 coming in. So let's look at the schematic here. So here's what that looks like. Stage 0 is the same uh, kind of full adder stage that we have seen for the ripple carry adder. There is the XOR here to compute the sum. And there is the OR gate for the propagate function, the AND gate for the generate function, and those need to be combined together to make the carry1, and that carry1 will feed into the XOR that computes the sum of stage 1. But then we also now feed those propagate and generate signals of the stage 0 directly into stage 1. And stage one now has additional uh, components to it. There is um, this AND gate here, that's uh, additional. And the, this OR gate here now has three inputs. So we are bypassing uh, here part of the uh, structure to get faster to the output if we have a propagate or a generate from the uh, stage zero. So the generate from stage zero would go directly in here. The propagate goes directly in here. Now it turns out the propagate is the, is the more crucial one in terms of the critical pass. And what we find here now is that um, from stage zero, the propagate goes directly into this AND gate and into this OR gate. So we now have just a three gate delay from uh, this y0 to c2. Three gate delay from y0 to c2. But the price that we pay is that we have more circuitry here in stage one. And if you would have added stage two as well, there would be even more. Stage two now takes the inputs from stage 0, which is uh, C0, P0, and G0. And it also takes the input from stage 1, which is P1 and G1, and um, the C2 here. So if you would extend this to um, more bits, then all the carry signals, we would see that all the carry signals are produced after just three gate delays. 
one gate delay to produce the generate and the propagate signals gi and pi so that's uh, one for getting the gi and pi signals and then two more gate delays uh, for producing all the carry signals c1 c2 etc simultaneously so back in the picture here uh, the two gate delays come from this gate here and this gate here and the one gate delay comes from either this one or this one and the total delay in an n-bit carry look ahead adder is now going to be four gate delays okay so the total is now four gate delays and the way we uh, arrived at that is um, as we just mentioned there are three gates in order to produce the carry signals but then there is also an, another gate delay uh, which is an XOR gate uh, to compute the sum of the bits so the the catch that we have here is that the complexity of an n-bit carry look ahead adder increases rapidly as n becomes larger and what we are what we will need to take a look at is um, how we can break this up into a more um, hierarchical approach in order to design uh, large adders from smaller carry look ahead adders okay so that will be the goal of the next installment here is to design large adders from smaller carry look ahead adders.